Prem Jagaho Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhupada Nanda Shri Roy Gadara Shivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Kijai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopinatha Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhana Kijai Shri Shri Vrindavan Dhamma Kijai Shri Shri Navarit Dhamma Kijai Shri Shri Mayapur Dhamma Kijai Shri Tulsi Devi Kijai Shri Shri Bhakti Devi Kijai Mayapur Dhamma Kijai Shama Veda Bhakta Vrinda Kijai All glories to the assembled devotees 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 all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Narayanam Naraskicham Naram Chaibam Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shlokar Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, ninth chapter, text number 8. Is that correct? Text 8? Shoot. Shoot. Hunger. Tree, tree thirst, tree da to be he, three humors, namely mucus, bile, and wind. Imaha, all of them. Muhuhu, always. Ardhimadna, Ardhimanaha, perplexed. Sita, winter. Ushna, summer. Vata, Vata, wind. Varasai, Varashahai, by rains. Itara, itara, and many other disturbances. Cha, also. Kama Agni Ma, Kama Agni Na, by strong sex urges. Achutara Usha, Achutarusha. Indefatigable honor, honor, anger. Indef, uh, indefatigable uh, anger. Cha, also. Sudara barena. Sudura barena. Most unbearable. Sampashyataha. Sampashyataha. So observing. Manan. Mind. Guru Krama, O oh great actor. Guru Krama, O oh great actor. Siddhate becomes despondent. May, my. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. O oh great actor, my lord. All of those poor creatures are constantly perplexed by hunger, thirst, severe cold, secretions, and bile. A attacked by coughing uh, winter, blasting summer, rains, and many other disturbing elements, and overwhelmed by strong sex urges and indefatigable anger, I take pity on them, and I am very much aggrieved for them. Uh, responsibly. O oh, great actor, great actor. My, lord. my lord, all these poor creatures, these poor creatures are constantly perplexed, perplexed. by hunger, Thirst, thirst, severe cold, severe cold secretion, secretion, and bile, attacked by coughing winter, <laughs> blasting summer, summer rains, rains, and many other disturbing elements, and, many other disturbing elements. and overwhelmed, and overwhelmed 
by strong sex urges and indefatigable anger. I take pity on them, and I'm very much aggrieved for them. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. A pure devotee of the Lord, like Brahma, and persons in his disciplic successions, succession are always unhappy to see the perplexities of the conditioned souls who are suffering the onslaughts of the threefold miseries which pertain to the body and mind, to the disturbances of material nature, and to many other such material disadvantages. Not knowing adequate measures for relieving such difficulties, suffering persons sometimes pose themselves as leaders of the people, and the unfortunate followers are put into further disadvantages under such so-called leadership. This is like a blind man's leading another blind man to fall into a ditch. Therefore, unless the devotees of the Lord take pity on them and teach them the, rich, the right path, their lives are hopeless failures. The devotees of the Lord who voluntarily take the responsibility of raising the foolish materialistic sense enjoyers are as confidential to the Lord as Lord Brahma. Om Gyanati Manandasya Dhananjana Salakaya Chaksarun Militam Jena Tasma Ishvira Vay Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Samaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurabhani Pracharane Nebisesa Sunyabhari Paschatya Deshatare Mukam Karoti Bachalam Bhangam Longaya Tegirim Yatkiri Pataraham Bande Shri Guru Dina Tarane This verse shows us that uh, Lord Brahma not only was the, the, the original engineer of the universe, but also very compassionate upon the fallen conditioned souls. Um, so the compassion is, a, is a, very, uh, a very common thing. And uh, the compassion that the devotees have for the suffering conditioned souls makes them uh, uh, want to tell them about Krishna consciousness. And other compassion, worldly compassion, is to stop people from suffering cold and uh, uh, heat and, and uh, you know, just like I have a lot of wraps on because I, I, I suffer from the cold. And so this is a very common thing. And, and the, the, there are many people that try to alleviate different types of suffering, hunger and thirst. And we're, we're, we're uh, treated to uh, different varieties of, of uh, foods to alleviate hunger. We go into a supermarket and there's uh, thousands of different types of, of colorful foods uh, at our be, uh, uh, behest. And, and uh, it, it's a way of alleviating hunger. It doesn't really alleviate hunger because the more we eat, the more we want to eat. And, and the more we drink, the more we want to drink. And it doesn't alleviate thirst. There's a, a saying in India that uh, they have uh, a drink, they used to have a drink, called Seven, uh, not, it was like Seven Up, but it was a, a kind of a, 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 a um, uh, Limka. Limka drink. And, and, it, and their slogan was, it's fun to be thirsty. <laughs> it's fun to be thirsty. <laughs> and, and, the, and then there was, a, there, was a, there was a ban on Coca-Cola for a while, but they have their own uh, brand of, of, of Coca-Cola now in, in, in that part of the country. So uh, one, of the, one of the things that happened, I don't know if, if uh, it's in, uh, there's a book in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the temple shop called uh, I, I Want to Build You a Temple, A Jew Who's Story. So one of the, the things that's told in that book, I don't know if it's, it's told in that book, but there was a time when Prabhupada was very ill. It was in 1966 or 1977. And he, he knew that he was going to leave the, the body and he knew that, uh, that he was going to depart soon. And, uh, and he said that to devotees that all my life I had tried to, to uh, become free from hunger and thirst, and now it's happened. <laughs> he was never hungry or thirsty because he was very ill. So and at about 2 o'clock in the morning, he, uh, he sent for someone to uh, awaken Giriraj Swami. And Giriraj was sound asleep, so someone came into his room. He had been, I don't know, somehow Prabhupada had, 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 had awakened someone else. And they said to the to Giriraj Swami that Prabhupada wants to see you. 
And he said, well, so why does he want to see me at 2 o'clock in the morning? So Prabhupada was kind of musing about how things would, would go on after he departed. And, and he wanted to ask Giriraj. He was staying in, in Mumbai, in Bombay, and, uh, and Giriraj was in charge of that temple. And uh, he asked Giriraj, he said, Giriraj, do you think after, after I leave that uh, you think things will go on okay? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of concerned. He used to lecture a lot about this and, and say that, that, uh, that he wanted things to go on after he departed. And he formed the GBC and he did many things to, to, uh, to safeguard the future of the ISKCON movement. So, so he had this discussion with Giriraj and Giriraj, uh, towards the end of the conversation, he said, so then if, um, if we follow the regular principles and we, we go to the, uh, the whole morning program, Mongol RT, the, the DD greeting, the, the, uh, the class every day, do you think things are going to go all right and, and be, be fine? And, and Prabhupada kind of assented. He, he, he shook his head. He didn't say yes. He shook his head kind of up and down, saying, in a way, saying that that was true, that, that, uh, that things would go on. And then as Giriraj was, and then he, he felt satisfied that if he, because he was a very regular devotee, uh, going to the morning program, following all the regular principles. So he, he uh, thought that that was all Prabhupada w uh, wanted to know. And as he was walking away, he heard Prabhupada say something to his back. And he said that, and use your intelligence and organization. And, uh, and that was kind of an unusual thing uh, because it was said not to his face, but to his back. And, uh, and Giriraj had to do this because he was running the, the temple in, in Mumbai, which was a, a very difficult job. I mean, there were hundreds of people. Some, sometimes on the weekends, they would, they would fill up with hundreds and maybe thousands of people. And uh, some of them were, were um, irregular people. I mean, they're, they were mentally challenged. They were you know, all kinds of people. So the, the uh, statement that you should use your intelligence and organization was, was, was not a new thing exactly to, to Giriraj. He knew that, that, uh, so, uh, that you couldn't blindly do, do, do things. So there's a, there's a, uh, a Sanskrit word called niyamagraha, and it refers to people who blindly follow rituals and don't have a lot of devotion, or people that have a lot of devotion and, and, and they don't think they need to follow any rituals. And in the third canto of, uh, of, in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada mentions in a purport that, uh, that uh, religion or uh, uh, speculation without religion is, is, uh, is, can, can, is sometimes fanaticism. And, uh, and, and, and following the regulated principles without devotion is, is, uh, is, not, uh, is not good, that one should, should not should that one should not just give up doing the, the uh, regulative things. So there are different types of, of advancement. One, one type of advancement is called sadhana bhakti, when people do, uh, they, they, they force themselves to go to Mangalarti, they force themselves to chant, they force themselves to do, uh, to associate with devotees. It's, it's actually forceful. Um, but that's very good because, because it, 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 it develops into a spontaneous uh, feeling, a spontaneous love, a spontaneous uh, eager, eagerness to see the deity, eagerness to, to associate with devotees. That's called sadhana bhakti. And then, and then the raganuga is when it, when it becomes spontaneous. It's kind of like learning to play a musical instrument. It's very, dread, very difficult and full of drudgery at the beginning, playing guitar, playing piano, playing trumpet. Uh, it, it, uh, there's a lot of exercises that we have to do that are, that are kind of like tedious and grueling and, and uh, they're not fun. But after a while, it becomes fun. It becomes easy. It becomes easy to play the guitar, the piano, and, and uh, the trumpet and everything. It, it's, it's kind of spontaneous. So uh, bhakti is kind of like that. There's this uh, raganuga, which is a kind of spontaneous bhakti, where one doesn't force, have to force oneself to go to the temple. One doesn't have to force oneself to associate with devotees. One doesn't have to force oneself to eat prasadam. Of course, we don't have to force ourselves to eat prasadam anyway. <laughs> but uh, we don't have to do anything that we don't want to do. And, and, uh, and in Krishna consciousness, we, we, at the, especially in the beginning, we have to do a lot of things that we don't like to do or want to do. Uh, but after a while, it, it, becomes, it becomes spontaneous and, and we... we, we uh, uh, we, we act on Raganuga Bhakti and everything is blissful and happy. And as it's said in Bhagavad Gita, uh, the, 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 the 
process of Krishna consciousness is joyful. And anyone who is Janma Karma Chamedi Vyam Eva Miyobari Tatvaha, who practices Krishna consciousness becomes joyful. Susu Kam, it's a joyful experience, not a grueling, difficult, and, and uh, hard experience. And, and uh, we have to force ourselves to do something. Uh, there's a, a group. This is somewhat related, but there's a group of, of nuns. I don't know wh where they're located, but uh, <clears throat> they call themselves consecrated virgins. And uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, they have to take a vow when they become a nun that they're going to to give. Their, they're going to marry either Jesus Christ or God. And uh, so, so uh, comparing Christianity in one way to uh, Krishna consciousness. Uh, sometimes people are critical of Krishna consciousness because they've heard that Krishna had thousands of wives and he danced with, with married women, gopis, and had a rasa dance. And, and, and so the, sometimes they criticize devotees by saying that, oh, your God is, is, is polygamous and he has lots of girlfriends, lots of wives. And uh, then one can reply by saying, well, it, it, the same thing because it consists, the, the same thing does now exist in Roman Catholicism. There's a group of nuns that take a vow to marry Jesus. The thousands of them, and and so what's the difference between a God who's who's promiscuous or who appears to be promiscuous, who has uh, many wives or many girlfriends, and God Himself? Because you have to take a vow, and you you're only one of thousands of, of uh, nuns that, that that take this vow. So so that's a, a way of comparing Christianity and 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 uh, um, Christian consciousness. There's some some people in some parts of the world that are, are, are uh, you know, very against Krishna consciousness. But it's actually, in a, in a way, it's it's very similar because we believe in God, and uh, we uh, we we have to surrender ourselves to Him. So, but but the difference is that, uh, as Prabhupada has said, that that a, the Bible is kind of like a, a, a pocket or a small dictionary, whereas the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedas are like the unabridged dictionary. The, everything is there. Complete philosophy, not limited philosophy, but complete philosophy of the science of God. He calls it the, the, the science of God, meaning that science is something that's very, uh, very uh, detailed and, and very precise and, and, and uh, v uh, the, the, uh, the, the philosophy of Christian consciousness can, can become very uh, complicated and sophisticated, much more than, than uh, other forms of, of worship that are, are simple. Uh, and, and sometimes, uh, as Prabhupada indicates, fanatical, because people don't follow everything. And, but, uh, of course, there are some people that follow our religions, and they know the, the, uh, the books of God, uh, for almost the entire books of God for memory. Some, some sects are, are, are very, uh, very, uh, uh, very expert. So uh, one, of the, one of the functions of a devotee is, is, uh, is, is called daksha. It's one of the 26 qualities of devotees, daksha. It means expert, and there was a devotee named Daksha who was very expert. So when we become expert at something, even if it's like automobile maintenance or construction or, or anything, um, it's a symptom of, 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 uh, of being um, Krishna conscious. And, and uh, not that one becomes Krishna conscious and, and everything else can go to hell. The plants, the, 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 the maintenance of, of, of the buildings, of the automobiles. They have, they have to become expert at, at, at doing these things. That's part of devotional service. That's one of the qualifications of a devotee, Daksha. Uh, he's intelligent. So, so uh, in addition to, to uh, obeying the, the uh, rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness, um, we, we have to develop love for Krishna. And if, they, if, if the, uh, the, the rituals that we follow don't develop that love for Krishna, it's just blind following. It's, it's like a b blindness. And as Prabhupada says, it's like you fall into a ditch if you follow a blind person, and he leads you. You're going to be going to fall into the ditch because you're you're following a blind person. You're blind yourself, and you're following a blind person. So these people, like like uh, um, Rama, are they are they are very compassionate, and and they're they're not compassionate in a material way. They're compassionate in a spiritual way. That that. Uh, uh, the devotee is part of Dukkha Dukkha. He he considers that that uh, people are are suffering. And he wants to alleviate that suffering. And that's the, what, what separates a devotee from a non-devotee. He, he has, a non-devotee usually wants a temporary relief from suffering. Okay, we can eat if we're hungry. We can drink if we're thirsty. Um, we, we can have a girlfriend if we need a girlfriend or a boyfriend if we need a boyfriend. But um, a person who is in, enveloped in love of God thinks that, that it, only if we can worship God, only if we can love God, then we can love everyone. Then we can really love 
uh, all of the, the creatures in this world. That is, is real compassion. It's not that, that it's a temporary compassion. It's real compassion. Compassion that people have to develop love for God, that that's real compassion. And, and one of the things that separates us from, from um, non-devotees uh, non is that devotees are, uh, they consider themselves servants, not masters. The, the, the problem, one of the biggest problems in, in, uh, in, in material society is that everyone thinks that he or she is the master, the master of all I survey. That's a, a common saying, the master of all I survey. But uh, a devotee it, it doesn't, doesn't think that he or she is a master. He thinks that he or she is a servant and God is the master. And it's a, it's a very difficult thing to, to, uh, to ascertain, uh, servitorship. And, and, and it's, it's considered to be kind of uh, in, in, uh, second class to be a, a servitor. I mean, even if one works for a big firm and, and does everything that, that, that they're told to do, uh, still sometimes they feel uh, uncomfortable or uh, uneasy because they're, they're, they're a servant. Uh, if if you're, you're serving a master, it's, it's a, it's a uh, un unenviable position. And if one becomes, one should become a master, that's what they think. So a devotee is, is always thinking that I'm a servant. I'm a servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the servants. That's, that's what a devotee's in, uh, conception is. And if, if, if one doesn't think that way, one is, is atheist. So the difference between a theist and an atheist is, is, uh, is pretty obvious. There are some people that, that are easily angered. They're easily uh, jealous of other people. They're easily made uh, thirsty. They're easily made hungry. And, and the Prabhupada, and in, one, in one place, I think it's in the Bhagavad Gita where he calls these the whips. Oh, it's in the Katha Upanishad. And he quotes Katha Upanishad in, in, in one of the other scriptures. And that hunger and thirst are, are two of the, the main whips. And lamentation and illusion, everyone is, is, is suffering from a lot of things. So in order to alleviate the suffering, the devotees are very compassionate. And they, 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 they even... Sometimes they distribute books and they get a hundred people saying no in one day. A hundred people saying no, I don't want it. And then there's, if there's one person that says yes and takes a book and gives a donation, then, then that, that makes the devotee's day. Then even though they're, they're uh, only one one hundredth of, of uh, successful, one hundred percent successful, they, they, they're, they're very happy because they've alleviated the suffering. And, and uh, Prabhupada has said that even if someone reads only one word, what to speak of one sentence or one verse or one chapter of, of a Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, that, that person will be benefited. And another, another benefit of Krishna consciousness is that people that are ritualistic, that follow rituals blindly, uh, if, if, they, if they are uh, unsuccessful in their attempt to be Krishna consciousness, in the next life they take up where they left off. So they, they, they're not losers. There's a, 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 an incident where, where, uh, where Krishna feigned hunger and he had his disciples go to some, some yajnic brahmas who were brahmins who were practicing rituals. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and they, they uh, told them that their master, Krishna, was, was su suffering from hunger. Would they please give them some food? And they, they, the yajnic brahmins said they couldn't give them food because they were, they were in the middle of doing their rituals. They were, they, the food hadn't been offered yet. So then Krishna went to their wives and the wives immediately uh, gave them food. So this is, this is what, what, uh, what devotees strive for, for uh, love of God when they would give God anything he wants. And there's another, another incident where, where uh, Prabhupada was saying that he had a headache. Uh, uh, Prabh, uh, Krishna was saying he, had, he was suffering from a severe headache. Of course, he never suffers from anything, but he said that. And he said, the only way I can be cured is if I get dust uh, from the devotee's feet. So most of the devotees were afraid to give dust from their feet because they thought giving dust from their feet to, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is a, is a formula for disaster. That's going to send us immediately to hell. But some, some of Krishna's gopi friends, they immediately gave the dust to Krishna and Krishna was very happy. So uh, Krishna has love for uh, all people, but especially people who are, uh, are, are freed of the material world, they, they're uh, very dear to Krishna. Uh, so that is uh, uh, a way that people can control their, their uh, sense. And it's mentioned in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, what, what is a confidential devotee? And a confidential devotee, uh, Prabhupada mentions in one of the purports, is a devotee who uses his good sense. 
Yeah, and so we have to be practical. In other words, good sense is, is not letting our, our automobiles and uh, our, our buildings go to hell, uh, and, uh, but, but taking care of them, maintaining them. That's, that's good sense. So the, word, the, the phrase good sense is sometimes used by Prabhupada. Common sense or good sense. We use good sense to, to, uh, uh, to be happy in this material world. So these are some, some thoughts that I had and when I was reading this. And if there's any, any questions or comments about any of this, I'll, I'll read the verse again. It says, O great actor, Lord Brahma is speaking. O great actor, uh, he's speaking to Krishna, my Lord. All these poor creatures are constantly perplexed by hunger, thirst, severe cold, secretion and bile, attacked by coughing winter, blasting summer, rains, and many other disturbing elements, and overwhelmed by strong sex urges and indefatigable anger. I take pity on them. I am very much aggrieved for them. It's interesting because people try to control their anger. Anger control is, is considered to be a very important thing that one has to to live in such a way that one doesn't ever become angry. But it's a common thing that people do become angry. And they, they destroy others' property, they, they get in fights, they, 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 they say uh, unkind words, and even to their own parents sometimes. So these are things that, that uh, uh, devotees overcome. They overcome anger and they can control it by, by developing love for Krishna. So these are some, some thoughts. And uh, if you have any comments or questions to, to uh, stump me with, please go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharaj. Um, just on the subject of compassion, um, is it right to think that it's compassion with the wrong understanding if it leads to um, maybe frustration with other devotees or depression, like something hard for someone to tolerate when they have a lot of compassion for someone that's suffering? Is that compassion in the wrong understanding? Well, there's different types of compassion. There's compassion for people that, that get angry. There's compassion for people that are, that are thirsty, compassion for people that are hungry, um, compassion by people who, who uh, have lots of boyfriends or girlfriends, and because they're, they're, they're not satisfied. No matter how they eat, no matter how many girlfriends or boyfriends they have, they're never satisfied. Their desires never satisfied. No matter how much they drink, uh, it's not fun to be thirsty. Uh, but if one obtains love of God, then one becomes very tolerant and is able to control the urges, as it's said in the uh, Upadesha Amrita, one who controls the urges of the mind, body, and, and the genitals is, uh, is successful. And, and, and we notice that in people that are very advanced, that they're, they're, they're able to control their urges. And, and not, that, not by force, but they, they've found something that they, that they like better. They found uh, Krishna is, is a more lovable thing, and Krishna's devotees are lovable people. So even though they're sometimes crass and rude to devotees, they, they can overcome it by, by constantly associating, developing some intimacy in their relationship. So they become, they, that kind of compassion is, is real compassion. And, and material compassion is not real compassion. One com gives someone like, like who's st starving, I mean, we have, uh, uh, a uh, kind of uh, 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 notion that there's a lot of hungry people in the, in the world. But uh, according to Prabhupada, real hunger only exists in the human society. The animals, like elephants, who eat a lot, and, uh, and, and horses, and, and, and well, of course, cows, we know. They, they, they eat a lot, a lot more in quantity. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're never satisfied. The, the, human beings are always hungry. They're, they're never satisfied because they, they even have a, a uh, in, in America they used to have a, uh, a, a law that, uh, that uh, excess food would be dumped into the, into the river because, uh, because there was just too much. So uh, the devotees think that there's not enough, not enough to go around and uh, some big companies are, are, are trying to irradiate food. They're trying to, to subject the, the food to, uh, to um, uh, uh, electronic or atomic sort of you know rays so that they, 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 they what they do though is they, they these these uh, uh, subjecting human beings to atomic energy uh, often creates birth defects sometimes people are born with seven or eight fingers and two heads and something like that so uh, but human beings do create this and 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 mother earth withholds her bounty uh, because there's so much sin going on in the world and so some people are, are hungry because they're just not getting it up because the earth is withholding uh, uh, the crops and, and, and foodstuffs. 
And that's, that's the human condition, that people are hungry and starving because they're, they're sinful. And if they, if they overcome sinful, they, they, they can become uh, happy. And then they're not craving for more and more and more and more and more. So it's different. Anyway, I hope that's somewhat helpful. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Oh, Hare Krishna, Gurmash. Oh. Hare Krishna. Oh. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I had a question about um, the different types of bhakti. Like when you were talking about the sadhana bhakti and the raganuga bhakti, I wondered if you could just confirm or make a comment on that because one time a devotee told me that even somebody who's just maybe on their first day of Krishna consciousness or coming to the temple, they may experience feelings of Raghunuga Bhakti, but in the nectar of devotion, it explains it more as like, it's a process, like you were saying, we start with the sadhana bhakti, coming to the temple, um, practicing, chanting, and yeah, I just wondered if, if you could comment on that. Uh, well, a couple of things occurred to me. One is that, that Krishna never talked, to, according to Prabhupada, never talked about intimate pastimes, Krishna Leela pastimes with newcomers, because they don't understand if you say, oh, Krishna married 16,180 wives, I mean, they, that's just a fantasy, that's fictional. People don't agree. And uh, secondly, that even if you have to force yourself to do something that you don't like to do, it becomes, it becomes lovable. Uh, I think the late Sridhar Swami said that, that it, like in, if you're in a temple and you see other people dancing and you say, oh, I'm not going to dance, but you force yourself to you do it anyway. You force yourself to do it. And it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's very unpleasant. It requires a lot of legwork and it requires a lot of motion that you're not used to. But after a while, it becomes fun. And it's, it, it becomes spontaneous. And you don't you do it because you, you have to do it. You're doing it because you like to do it. And so that's what Raganuga is. And in the beginning, uh, people, they, they don't understand what Raganuga is. How, how can it be spontaneous? You have to, it's like waking up in the morning. You have to force yourself to get up. And that first minute or two, I think everyone has this experience, is, is very painful. <laughs> but after a while, you, you think, well, I'm, I'm going to go to the temple. I'm going to see Krishna, my Lord. And, and, and it becomes happy. It becomes a joyful experience. And, and it's said in Bhagavad Gita, Susukam, that, that uh, the understanding the birth and activities of Krishna is a joyful experience. But one cannot understand Krishna uh, uh, completely. Even Lord Rama doesn't understand Krishna completely. And, and, and Lord Seisha, who has many heads, uh, he, he speaks and he can go for for uh, days and months and years and lifetimes and still never never get, uh, cover all of the, the, uh, the qualities of Krishna. There are so many qualities. And in these verses where we're reading about Lord Brahma is, is, is commenting, uh, is complimenting Krishna on having so many abilities and so many uh, uh, that he can relieve hunger, he can, he can um, uh, manage the whole universe, he can do all these things. And after a while, when, when one understands these things, one becomes very happy and very joyful, even though it's a, it's a very a very foreign kind of thing. We, we can't see Krishna. Of course, we can see a deity, but we can't actually see Krishna, and we can't eat with him, we can't, uh, we can't play with him. Uh, of course, in the very advanced stage, it's possible to do all those things. But uh, then it, it, uh, that uh, sadhana bhakti becomes a raganuga bhakti, but the, the difficult the difficulties of forcing ourselves to do something and to do something because it's complied, because it's, it's ordered or, or we're complying, uh, it becomes enjoyable. It becomes a Raganuga Bhakti. But it, it takes time. Uh, although chanting is a very enjoyable thing for uh, beginners because it's, 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 it's got an enjoyable aspect to it. But after a while, it can become uh, tedious. And, and uh, it has to develop into Raghunuga Bhakti. And one, one pursues it and continues to do all the things that are difficult to do, uh, they become easy. And, and Sadhana Bhakti turns into Raghunuga Bhakti. Is that somewhat helpful? Yeah. Okay. So we'll have time for maybe one other question and then we'll end. Anyone want to say anything or ask anything? Or? Okay. <laughs> we'll stop here. Uh, yes. Martha Sarthi. Guru Maharaj, when you were talking about um, 
if someone see if someone hears even one word of um, the Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam that they get benefit. So we can understand that that would include, you know, sure Prabhupada's purpose. Prabhupada's meaning that too. Like if we if if anyone just reads like a or is it accompanied with the Sanskrit? I think well, when Prabhupada said that, uh, he was referring to verses rather than purports. But I, I think it applies equally to purports. We can just take a specific word or, uh, you know, I mean, maybe that's an exaggeration. If you just, I mean, I, I ask all of my followers and disciples to read uh, 30 pages every day minimum. And not, I know that not everyone is able to do it. It's not exactly a vow. It's more like a promise. But you, if you promise something in front of the guru, in front of Prabhupada, in front of the deities, in front of the fire, it's a good thing to, to, uh, to, to make good on it, to follow up on it. So uh, when Prabhupada was saying that, that we should read every day, one chapter, one verse, one, one sentence, one word, he may have been exaggerating. But if we do, do pick up a book, a Krishna conscious book, and only read one word, we, we do get some benefit. But it's better to read a whole, a whole sentence or a whole verse or a whole chapter <laughs> or a whole number of pages. That's yeah. better. Yeah. But something is better than nothing. Yeah. So if, if someone hears a purport of Prabhupada, if someone hears, say you're reading to someone but you haven't read to them, like someone who's not a devotee, but they are maybe leaving their body, this is just in context, and so you want to read to them, you read to them Prabhupada's purport or Prabhupada's yeah. words. It's the same uh, as the Prabhupada has, has uh, said in many places that hearing is, is the most important thing of, of uh, Krishna consciousness. And so even if we don't understand, like he was saying, that he didn't understand even what his own guru, Bhaktisanta Sartati, was, was saying, because it was very difficult, very advanced. But, but he, was, he, was, uh, he sat there and he listened. And, 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 and Bhaktisanta Sarasati commented that this is a unique and wonderful person because he listens. So even if we don't understand, if we just hear, that's very good for us. And, and for people that are new, even if they don't understand what's going on, if they hear the, and if they chant, and if they hear the chanting, and if they hear the, the recitations of, of Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, they're benefited. And, and as Prabhupada said, even, even the animals, they, 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 they hear, and they can't understand these complicated sentences and paragraphs, but they're benefiting. And so are the insects, and so are the plants and trees, even in, in inanimate objects, because they, there's a soul in there, and, and, and uh, it, it's beneficial. So I think that's all we have time for. Hare Krishna, Hi. with getting cold. <laughs> Yeah.